leave there every day wishing that I could have done more. I'm feeling quite useless at the moment. It was something that I never, ever, ever dreamt that I would ever witness in my whole career. Another look. Linden House Nursing Home in Wellington prides itself on counting residents as family. 36 9 this time. But when nine family died with coronavirus over the Christmas period and 80% of staff were either ill or self isolating, the pressures became almost too much to bear. As the days went on, it came down to me and one member of my staff. Everyone else was isolating or just desperately needed days off. Um, and agency carers where we could get them, uh, micro providers who were brought in to help by um, Somerset County Council, um, and it just got worse and worse and worse. I could not leave my home, uh, my care home, without knowing that my, my residents were safe. And so by the time I'd driven home and had my shower, which we all have to have, and put my clothes in a 60 degree wash so that the virus was killed, I had three hours to sleep. And of course I didn't sleep. I couldn't sleep because I was so worried. And that's what I keep having flashbacks about. I know our residents didn't suffer. They just didn't get the usual standard of care that we like to give them at Linden House. And I have to live with that. And it's really, really difficult. Sadly, this home is not alone. Many have been affected, understandably most reluctant to talk about it. But here they have been brave enough to talk about raw grief, the exhaustion of staff, sheer desperation and the feeling that at times this is a care sector truly undervalued. Lyndon says it's very grateful for the support it received during its darkest hours, especially from Somerset County Council. But it's clear that for staff, the scars remain. Working at Linden through the outbreak of COVID is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in all my years of care. And just wish that we could all embrace each other like we want to by maybe giving a hug. I feel guilty every time I leave. I feel guilty that I'm, I'm walking away from people that are being left in such a stressful situation. You go to hospital or you work for the NHS and I'm not saying it's any easier, but you are in a corridor saying you need a nurse or a doctor and you've got one within five minutes. Here, you just felt like you were so alone. I love what I do and I love being able to work with people and, and not having enough staff in order to deliver the care that they needed at the time is devastating for me. I feel so responsible. I know it's not my fault. I know I didn't bring COVID into the home. I can't blame anyone who did. COVID is out there and it's awful. It takes no prisoners. Somerset County Council, which is responsible for adult social care, provided help and support to all care homes, including Linden House. Deputy Director Tim Babastock says how the home coped was nothing short of remarkable. We've seen uh, some very negative stories in the press around care homes uh, and COVID in particular. I think this story tells the real story and that is you, you can't help how COVID got into the home. You don't know how COVID got into the home, but once it's in the home, it has a devastating impact on the people that you support, but also on your staff base. And then that makes it even more difficult to carry on supporting the people that are uh, remain in your home. And I think, you know, this care sector really does try and look after people. They do their best by the people that they support. Um, and, and the circumstances of this over the winter have been quite extraordinary, really. So, yeah, hats off to them. Recently, I, I asked him about it. Rachel lost her brother during the COVID outbreak at Linden House. She has nothing but praise for the way staff coped with what she called a horrendous situation. I mean, I'm a nurse myself, or was a nurse myself. Um, so you can really empathise with how those girls must have felt and, and the lads that work there. i thinking to myself, I don't know how I would have been able to have gone to work. Two catering staff here worked 11-hour shifts for 20 days without a break because so many staff were self-isolating. To this day, it's February and I still can't do 
11 hour shift. It just brings me straight back to Christmas when it was our darkest days. I just have flashbacks. So I've just kept to working the mornings and not doing a double shift. It's just very difficult when you've always used to be the carer to suddenly go and ask for help. And I'm just struggling to go in this morning to face my staff with the smile that I feel they are owed. The days just seem so long and never ending. Every morning I'd get up to go to work. I'd feel anxious and feel upset about what I was going back into and worrying about the residents and my colleagues. We all did the best that we could and now there seems to be light at the end of the tunnel. And it is that light that keeps staff going just now. The vaccination programme has provided hope for a brighter future. The early data from other care homes across Somerset shows the vaccinations are working, with the impact of Covid greatly reduced after residents and staff have received their first jabs. But this emotionally charged story provides proof, if proof were needed, that Covid can hit care homes quickly and hard. Proof too that staff somehow cope, even against all the odds. Looking to the future, the hope, certainly here, is that the care sector will now get the recognition and the support it truly deserves. I'll see you next week.